Forex Focus brought to you by IG, taking a look at the record high gold prices that we've seen recently, gold trading up above $2,100 for the second time in its history and actually getting to $2,150 in intraday trading. And that's the highest price that we have in the recorded history of gold futures. Um, so some crazy, crazy price action we're seeing in the precious metal space. Going to today dive into why we're seeing this, how we got here, and uh, what it potentially means for the stock market, for the Forex market, the interest rate market. Uh, what does price action like this historically portend for those different markets? And what are the current correlations? Uh, a lot to talk about here, but let's start with the gold story. As you can see, uh, shooting above $2,000, we're still trading above $2,000. Uh, have been for the last handful of days. And you can see in recent history, $2,000 has been a, I don't want to say necessarily a resistance level, but it's been an important price point for this precious metals commodity that it's traded up to and, and traded beyond a little bit and then come back below and then went up and hit it uh, a couple of weeks ago, came back down to 1950, uh, 1900-ish, and then Again, we find ourselves up and beyond, and actually, like I say, trading to 2150 intraday, the highest gold futures traded um, in recorded history, and that was on December 4th, uh, 2023. Um, and, and so, uh, this is all to say, you know, historic prices for gold uh, amid, you know, of course, there's always stuff going on, there's plenty of news items that you could. Uh, ascribe to this story. Um, but for me, it's it's more of uh, an amalgamation of a, a bunch of different organic price action type reasons. Um, one, it hit on uh, a Sunday night before Asia and Europe woke up, so a, a relatively illiquid time of the trading day, and before actually the trading week even kicked into motion. The U.S. had been out of the market for 48 hours. And um, like I say, the Asia and Europe hadn't been in the market quite yet. They were just getting there on uh, Sunday night Eastern time when gold traded up there. Um, and, and so relatively liquid time. And remember the Friday going into that historic trading period for gold up to 2150, the market closed around 2050, 2060, so near those highs. And whenever we get near to a historic high, as you can see, this is cold for the last 30 years and uh, 2150 rarefied air, anything above $2,000 is really rarefied air. Uh, whenever we get to a historic, historic level like that, especially in a commodity, this is a primary commodity market, uh, a single name commodity market, gold. A lot of times you'll get traders trying to see how far they can push it, so to speak, uh, as opposed to sometimes on a Sunday night open, if there's been some geopolitical news that's happened between Friday night and Sunday night, the market will gap higher. It'll open uh, higher or it'll open lower if the news is uh, actually the antithesis of volatility inducing. Wasn't that? Um, the gold market closed Friday near highs, Sunday opened slightly higher, and then between the open and when Asia and Europe stepped in the market, traded up to that 2150 and actually closed the day significantly lower uh, than where it had started. Um, but yeah, you can see that gold traded 1900 in 2011 uh, and then came off pretty considerably between then and uh, the lows that gold saw there in 2016 getting all the way close to triple digits at that point. Um, uh, and so getting essentially close to cut in half in that period. Uh, and then in 2020, the first time that gold got above $2,000 in the wake of the pandemic, uh, reversed a lot of that over the coming months. The stock market bounced back. A lot of fear dissipated. Then we had the inflation fear that um, ran gold up in 2021, 2022 area, gave a lot of that back. And now we find ourselves at these highs once again. And so, like I say, gold 
is is a very complicated um, single market because um, uh, you might say, well, Frank, the S and P five hundred that's a market that makes new highs historically. It's made thousands of new highs. Um, and so if that market goes on on a Friday at a high and then opens up on a Sunday, why aren't traders trying to run that up? That's 500 stocks. It's relatively diversified product. Gold here, a, a single name commodity that has a lot of weird characteristics. For example, it's a, a store of value, but not a source of growth. Um, a, a market that investors will usually jump into when there's some either sense of unease, fear in the stock market or somewhere else, um, or they're worried about their value, their, their cash or, or investment value um, losing. Uh, you, you wouldn't necessarily find a market that's seeing high growth and seeing high demand for gold because most people would be pouring investment into that growth that they're seeing in the market. Um, so it could be some of that could be a little of the inflation hedge, but inflation obviously has been moving lower um, here recently. Uh, and yeah, gold sometimes will be a, a hedge against inflation, but kind of a store of a value of a different name. Uh, and then finally, it's, you know, a precious metal, uh, not a diversified asset, which can lend to that volatility piece. And so a lot going on in this seemingly simple uh and straightforward single product here. Uh, and you can, like I say, assign whatever reason for the recent bout of buying gold. Uh, I think a little of it being interest rates are coming lower. And so there's maybe a little bit more demand for a, a gold that's not interest bearing. Uh, but also what we've seen is uh, the relationship between gold and stocks really change over the course of the last couple of years. Prior to the pandemic, gold was negatively correlated to the S&P 500 most of the time. You see a lot of red. Now, it's not stark red. It's not you know negative correlation of negative 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 um, necessarily, but it's pretty consistently negative between you know 2014 and 2020. Now, since that pandemic, it's been pretty consistently green and so, you know, maybe it's no coincidence that we're seeing the S&P and the NASDAQ get close to these uh, all-time highs once again here in the later part of 2023 and gold pushing towards, you know, hitting new all-time highs as uh, the relationship has definitely changed over the course of the last decade. And you can see it within the price action as well, Right. Uh, look at everything between uh, 2000 and 2020 in that 20 year span, especially between 08. I mean, you can look at the financial crisis, right? 08 to uh, around 2015, when the, the stock market finally got back to new highs. And in that period, gold goes from trading around 500 bucks to trading 1500 bucks. Um, and so you're seeing that inverse correlation there. When stocks are held down in that period, gold is prospering. Uh, but the relationship definitely changed here uh, between 2020 and now, as you see the S&P 500 and gold kind of trading lower together and trading higher together, uh, pushing the question of, you know, ha have they become dynamic in the sense of the relationship has changed from negative to positive, or have they become just uncorrelated and uh, they don't really give a damn what the other one is doing. Um, hard to say that latter piece, especially when you see, like I say, the, the most prosperous time for the gold commodity in the last 20 years, really coming between 08 and 2012, some of the worst times for the stock market. Um, it definitely seems like there's been correlation, but maybe uh, the correlation has become uncorrelated in the last couple of years, and it's not necessarily positive now, and it has to be positive. It's It can be whatever. Um, one thing we do know for fairly certain is that gold and rates have historically been very strong inverses, and that makes a lot of sense, right? Gold tends to see a lot more demand when interest rates are lower, 
why would I, you know, push investment into a zero percent yielding treasury bond, even though it's it's very uh, a safe asset, so to speak? There is a little bit of risk to it, as opposed to gold, which is this store of value that, yeah, I'm not earning interest on, but no one's earning interest in the bond market. Um, and so you've seen this relationship play out relatively stronger than stocks and gold over the course of the last couple of years since the pandemic, let's say, where when yields and uh, treasury yields and interest rates in general were climbing, uh, especially in 2022, uh, the gold market was moving lower. Uh, and then in recent times, as yields have started to turn lower once again, that's when gold has pushed back to a new all-time high. Uh, and so gold pushing through new highs, that could be an indication of the potential for rates to move even lower. Maybe the gold market is seeing something the rate market's not yet seeing. But of course, on the flip side, if um, this is just a blip for interest rates and they're going to actually stay between 4 and 5%, even higher than 5%, in the next uh, handful of months or years, uh, then gold might give back the ground that it's gained. And so you have a, a relatively stronger inverse correlation there. And here's a, a bunch of correlations uh, showing the inverse relationship between dollars and gold. Uh, this has been one where, especially for dollar Swiss franc in the Forex market, but also you see that Euro dollar and Aussie versus USD relationship being very inverse and negative between gold and USD. And so another one there um, where the dollar has just started to give back some ground. So if you think that the gold market is just starting to take off, these new highs will be a regular thing. It'll go from you know 2,000 to 2,100 to 2,200. Um, then short dollar positions would be correlated to that type of thought process given historical trading here and these numbers uh, over the last couple of years. And if you think that there's reversion coming uh, for that gold market back down to what's been historically normal, 1900, 1800, 1500, uh, even then uh, potential long dollar positions, given these historic uh, relationships between Forex and gold. And yeah, US dollar, Swiss franc being the strongest recently, and you see them overlaid on each other. And yeah, I mean, dollar franc getting hit really hard uh, under 88 in recent trade as uh, gold has been trading up above 2000 bucks.